Hi, welcome to my video. Uh. Greetings and welcome to what I should probably put on a tripod. All right, alas, here we are. This is where my ideas start in little sketchbooks like this. Here's an example of another one from quite a while ago. Just do lots of tiny thumbnails. And I pull all of this as much as possible from my imagination because I believe that that's where art should come from instead of just copying from a photo or something. Um, anyways, I do use photos, but that aside. So now I'll zoom in and show you some okay, close. So all of these other ideas are from another time. This is from many months ago. Um, I like to use paper, I like to use it up. So that's why there's always, I try to fill every square inch if I can. Uh, this was the first sketch. I'm just trying to uh, lay things out, pull something out of my head. So I've got all this going on. It's a little scene with the character, as you can see. If you saw the thumbnail and then you fast forward to the end of the video, you'll see the finished version of that. I make lots of little notes as I go. I'm left-handed, so when I'm writing in a book, I, I usually start on the right side of the page and then I go to the, to the left. So that's why this arrow goes to the next idea, just trying out a different camera angle, uh, trying out another different camera angle. Uh, value is huge, of course, so I'm like getting a little bit of shading in there to see how it would feel. Getting a little more developed. I think this was after I made the maquette. So I had a I had some help from this point. But before I can make the maquette, I have to know kind of what it should look like. So the more that I can get out of my mind, the better. And I think this drawing was what the maquette came from actually. So this is a collection of one sixth scale characters. That's uh, roughly like Barbie doll scale. Um, I'm playing with the lights here just to see what they will do. And uh, warm and cool doesn't really matter, of course, because this is monochrome, uh, little ornaments I've collected. Uh, so I try to get as much as I can from something like this in a drawing. For a painting, I go way further, uh, but this is kind of the bare minimum, playing with lens angles. I think I went with the wide angle lens here, kind of help that dynamic flow. And of course, this is the kind of the closest shot that I got to give me a pretty good idea of the perspective and whatnot as well. So from the combination of the initial sketches, uh, maquette to help me figure out extra things about the perspective and proportion, I can finally figure out exactly what the dimensions of the final piece are going to be and then start using a ruler and ripping paper. So I printed these out because I like to get away from working on screens all the time if I can. Um, it's just nice to have that. It's also portable if you're working outside, you know, can't look at a screen. I'm using Pitt Matte Graphite Faber-Castell pencils. Please sponsor me. So to start the drawing, what I do is the same thing that I, I'm always preaching from my pulpit in uh, drawing classes is measurement. So two ways to draw. You can either copy something and that's all about measurement. You can get away with not knowing anything about what you're drawing if you have accurate measurement. And the other way is to invent. And in order to invent, you have to know a lot. Um, so what I'm trying to do is use photo references and reinvent them. Uh, the last couple drawings that I did, like um, there's one post I did fairly recently of this drawing here. Um, much easier for whatever reason, the figure just kind of happened. And even with uh, this one, for example, I felt like it was, uh, those are prints of those drawings, by the way. Um, the originals are a bit bigger. Um, yeah, it, they were just easier. I've really had a bit of a headache with this character. thing too is that I didn't plan for this to be the case, but I think the arm will have to go all the way back to the edge of the door canvas rather than the middle bracing part. That's kind of what it is. It's, uh, it's still not feeling right to me, so I just have to make it feel right and make myself despise it less. <laughs> All joking aside, I think what I'm really trying to say here is that it's always a challenge and it always feels like I don't know what I'm doing. I get the imposter syndrome constantly and just know from the past that I've kind of fought my way through the weeds, even though it feels like it's not going to work. And eventually it, it, it does. Love to see an open cylinder on the bottom of a boot like that. I always love to see those shapes. This one does appear to be, actually it is perfectly straight across on my reference image, but I chose to make it very slightly curved um, just because it looks better. Um, So 
so I've, I've gone and done the very thing that I cannot stand when a video skips from like step 2 to step 12. Uh, not that I'm trying to make a step by step. I mean, if I was, this would have to be like 20 times longer. But um, I'll never do it again now that I have the proper gear. All right, so I finally have a ca overhead camera mount and I'm really excited about that. Obviously started to work on this. It kind of looks like part of a Holstein cow or something right now. It makes no sense whatsoever in terms of the light source and all that. Uh, but it will show me how the overall balance of the composition works once all of this area is primarily dark. Most of it will be like zero on the grayscale, so super, super dark. That's going to make all of the other darks as they lead into the other deeper shadows uh, feel welcome, basically. So um, now I even just by having this here, I already see like how much darker I can get in some of these areas, how they lead into the shadows and these areas and whatnot. So I'll go ahead with that now. So obviously there'd be so many more efficient ways to paint outer space, like with just a bunch of black and then put white splatters over top of some kind. But I'm really attracted to the difficulty of inventing natural patterns. All right, so this is an example of one of many practice sheets where I will rehearse the formula for a face, rather than trying to do an exact portrait of a person, I'm concerned about capturing the emotion. And uh, by doing so, going through, this is one of the earlier ones, by the time I get here, I'm starting to feel something and I'm making my own character that I like that was a little extreme, maybe pretty funny. And I think this is one was a main influence, but it's really all about making it my own instead of trying to do an exact portrait of someone. So the key word here for me is scale. Um, at this size, if you're off by a millimeter, it can change the expression completely. And you know, obviously if you're doing something life size or bigger, you can be off by a millimeter and you probably won't even notice it. So I think scale is, is something I've thought about for a long time. It's To me, it's even bigger than, than medium. So here I finally got confident enough to get into the full darkness, darkest value with my 14B pencil uh, after I got all the outer space. And here I'm using my brace bar uh, and making wallpaper because I wanted to give it more of a kind of a cozy feeling to this interior space, kind of a juxtaposition from the cold, dark exterior space. All right, I'm going to start shading the face and I'm nervous about it. So for this part, even though it is sped up footage, I'm really trying to slow down to make sure that uh, kind of treating it like a sacred space so that every square millimeter is exactly the value that I want it to be. This kind of thing is always such a walk in the park compared to a portrait. <laughs> it's a vacation in a pretzel factory. <laughs> it's like an experience drawing a dog, <laughs> sleeping on a tile floor. Where did that voice come from? Anyways, who doesn't like a dog in a narrative? 
back to my horrific terror. Uh, so you, the reason that I have to put so much more dark into her face is that she's kind of in front of the main light source. So she has to look like the main light source is really kind of hitting her. Uh, I guess it'd be our left, her right side of the face more. So that's why I had a lot of uh, darkening to do. And it's one of those things where it kind of feels like it gets worse before it gets better. And then there's a very slight bit of a, a light coming from the other side as well. All right, so this is a point where I always step back as much as possible and kind of see the mess that I've created. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm hoping to be like the 80% point by now. Main thing is that there's still a lot of areas that could be a lot darker considering that the faces, those two faces are not what I want them to be as well. And that's like, a, those are focal points, right? So have to get those. And then there's a lot more to take care of still with the general overall value. This is one of those examples where, uh, in the actual photo reference, the little fold goes right here, and then it ends, it sort of like sweeps into that area behind the hand. And I'm extending it here because it just makes more sense to the eye. It doesn't confuse what's going on. And those little things happen all the time with photo references, where different shapes and forms and lines are intersecting at weird places and it doesn't, it doesn't make that um, area uh, candy for the eye, or um, it doesn't put it on a, on a silver platter for the viewer to have those things, you know, certain things kissing, breaking that rule, no kissing, um, intersecting in weird spots, uh, halves instead of roughly thirds, or, you know, two-fifths, or more natural-looking divisions like that. Just thought I would mention that. Darkening the calf, darkening the calf. I think that's the melody. <laughs> I was thinking of finishing the hat from that musical. Well, this is my variation, darkening the calf. Why not? Darkening the sole of a boot. Is it a shoe or a boot? It's a boot shoe. I think it's more of a boot. Yeah. Just going along, just looking at what I'm doing, thinking, why? Why did I do this? Uh, no, I think I just, I just got more confidence to bring everything into its full darkness. I always tell people in my drawing classes, like think about the general dark and light of your entire composition you're gonna make, whether it makes more sense to use white paper or uh, like tone paper and then use like white chalk for the highlights. In this case, I gave myself quite a big job choosing to use white, well, it's like cream paper. Okay, so this is where I have to put my um, wannabe philosopher hat on and jump on the bandwagon with, I believe it was Kant who thought that an artwork should not require a signature, and I kind of feel the same way. So that's like why I like to hide the signature in the image instead of breaking the fourth wall and just slapping a big red one in the corner. Thank you. 